Hi friends of Powerhouse Bakery and divas and dudes out there. My name is Suzanne Parker and I'm the founder and CEO of Powerhouse Bakery. Uh, we love to show the world that healthy can taste amazing. You know, starting with great ingredients is really the biggest part of making healthy food taste wonderful. You know, so often people are afraid to go healthy because they're afraid to give up some of their favorite flavors. And a lot of the times it's just about what they don't know um, that they're possibly missing out on in that category of healthy. So today I'm gonna show you how to build an amazing salad. You know, we always think salads when we think of, okay, I'm gonna go and eat healthy, I'm gonna go have a salad. And sometimes salads um, that at the first glance we think are healthy are actually loaded with not so healthy. Whenever we overdo salad dressings or we even overdo good ingredients like maybe nuts or um, of course cheese, can easily become a calorie laden salad that started out to be good and then just went way overboard. So I wanna show you how to build an amazing salad that has great ingredients, uh, is very satisfying, it's complete, so it's got some protein, some complex carbohydrates, lots of beautiful antioxidant rich vegetables, and I think it's gonna taste amazing. So I can't wait to show you. So let's get started. Let me show you the finished product. This is my teriyaki steak salad. So what I have in here is loads of flavors and layers. So what I started with is beans at the bottom and I'm gonna show you how to make all of this. So make sure you take notes. I've got some flavored beans and then I've got a beautiful mix of greens, not just one type, but a variety of greens and herbs. And then I've got this beautiful marinated steak. And then I put some fresh veggies all around it. So layers of flavor and at every point, we're adding interest and intrigue with this beautiful salad. And you know what, Powerhouse Bakery, we do love to celebrate certain types of diets. And so this salad would work beautifully for somebody that's trying to eat lower carbohydrate, uh, somebody that wants to get something that has lots of color and flavor, that's high in iron, not only from the beans, but of course from the meat. So let me show you how I built it. The first thing we're gonna do is add our complex carbohydrates to the base. And remember, if you want to take out one of these layers or even substitute a layer, you always can do that. What's really nice is that I'm going to teach you how to do the layers and then you can mix and match. And I'll give you some ideas as we go. Okay, so this is my black beans. I just opened a can of black beans, but I didn't stop there. I added some of my Powerhouse Bakery adobo spice and I added some fresh cilantro. And so I'm gonna put this on the base of my salad. And you know, that if you've ever been to Powerhouse Bakery, you know that we are healthy food to go. So what I love to do is show my customers and my friends how you build so that it stays really fresh up to a week and it's easy to mix when you're ready to enjoy it. So the beans go in the base because we don't want it to get our greens all soggy. Next comes the greens. So what I've done here in this, in this nice big bowl is I've blended some greens. I've got some kale, some baby kale. I even have some romaine, um, arugula, and I always add in plenty of herbs. You know, cilantro is loaded with antioxidants. I always try to encourage people, um, don't just do a little sprig here and there, do a lot. And so make it your goal that you're gonna buy a bundle of cilantro and maybe some parsley and heck, even some arugula and load it into everything. So full of antioxidant power. And you know that the phytochemicals that are in herbs are really nature's way of getting all of those phytochemicals, super potent. And of course, the animal kingdom loves to eat the herbs because they know how much value is in it. So I've mixed my kale, which is rich in all kinds of minerals as well as the antioxidants. And I've got the romaine, which gives us an extra little bit of crunch. And so then I'm gonna load up the greens. Notice that the greens are dry because I've got the sauce coming in on the very top. Now sometimes you could pre-soak the kale. Kale is one of those veggies that people think um, is kind of hard. It won't be um, because we're putting lots of layers on here, but 
One of the popular things that I like to do is pre-soak the, the kale and then I could still mix it in with the dry other greens. So it gives it an extra little boost. Because let's face it, the kale is one of those greens that's extra, oh, you know, um, stiff uh, because it's so loaded with all those beautiful complex um, fibers. And so, of course, it gives us wonderful nutrients, but some people say that it's hard. And so pre-soaking it would work out great. So now I've put in my greens. And now I'm going to add some vegetables. So I've got this beautiful variety. So remember, the eyes eat first. So we want to make sure that we've got plenty of beautiful colors in my salad. So notice what I did here is I tucked them around the edges. I put the cucumber all around. I just kind of tucked it around because we don't want it to get soggy, but we want it there when we're ready to have that, our nice, flavorful salad. And so um, red onion is great. Uh, it gives you lots of good flavor and usually it's on the sweeter side than um, some of the other other onions But you never know sometimes it is going to be spicy so you can slice it large that way If you don't want to eat it all you can take some of it out So I'm slicing it and I'm tucking it around the edges. This is the red bell pepper And I'm going to do a couple of different colors Here I've got my cucumber which is kind of that light green and this is a wonderful cucumber. I'm going to show you in a second the full size, but the little baby cucumbers are oftentimes really nice because the seeds are immature, so you don't have the, ha the hard inside. And don't peel the cucumber. Leave all that great fiber and nutrient fully loaded in your veggies. So I'm going to do a few more slices here of my pepper. And of course, you could use different colors too. I think over in my container back here, I even have some colors. So I'm going to show you how to marinate the meat and still use a lot of these wonderful peppers. But these little minis work great in salads. You can even, you know, leave out the seeds or you can just le let them just kind of fall. It'll give some extra zing in your salad. So I've got now the purple onion. I've got all the bright greens of the multicolor um, greens and arugula and cilantro. Now I've got orange. I've got the cucumber, so isn't that so pretty? It makes it a great salad, and it's so exciting to open it up at lunchtime and, and have just a cacophony of flavors and colors, and not to mention nutrient-rich. So now I've got all these beautiful colors. Now for the next layer. So what I've done here is I cooked some marinated steak. This is um, really nice because it, it's easy to prepare. I marinated it and then I did a quick grill and sliced it thin on the angle. And I'm going to show you how to do this, but see how very thin it is. So it's very easy to eat and oh my gosh, it makes it such a nice way to add protein to a salad. Now, if you wanted to go more plant-based, you could absolutely leave this off. You could instead put some quinoa on the top. You could put chicken if you wanted. Same idea. So you got your complex carbohydrates on the bottom, all the greens in the center, and your beautiful protein right on the top. And I'm doing about four ounces. Again, you could do less. If you wanted to do uh, red meat on occasion, smaller amounts, you could do that. Sometimes I even do this salad with salmon on the top, and it's so luscious. And then I've got my sauce. So I'm going to put it right on top of the meat, and it's going to just slowly drip around onto the greens. Not too much because I don't want it to get soggy, but I know that holding it at the top is going to really keep it um, from soaking too much into those more delicate greens and veggies. Isn't that amazing? So this is my teriyaki salad. And with um, you can use your own, of course, Tupperware at home. Um, I don't know. Oops, I don't know if you can buy these commercially, but if you ever want to do your own meal prep, let me know, and I'll give you a few of these containers because they're lovely. It's a nice, well-rounded salad. It's got everything you need, and it's ready to go. And when you uh, make sure that everything's cold before you assemble it, you won't get any condensation on the top, which is really important when you do meal prep. You do not want any moisture because that will cause the food to spoil a lot faster. So there you have it, a beautiful salad ready to go. And again, it'll last at least a week in your fridge. Take it to lunch and it's a really nice salad, fully loaded with good stuff. Let me show you how we started it. 
So this is the meat um, cut that I used. And I like this one because it's really lean. Um, notice that, yeah, it's got a tendon to the center, but very little uh, fat all around the edges. And that's what I look for. If I'm going to serve beef to my uh, family and my friends and, of course, my my customers, I want to do the healthiest I can. Um, sometimes my customers will ask if I'm using um, free range or uh, grass fed. and. The problem is, in that category of beef, it becomes a lot higher in fat. So I try to encourage folks to just go with visual assessment. Is it low in fat? Does it look like there's not really any gristle? If there is, we can easily cut that, that section out because we really want to focus on the, the total fat of our meal, uh, especially if it's meat. So the cholesterol in beef you know, is still an issue. Even people that are trying to follow a keto diet, I still try to make sure they realize that we don't want to overdo the, the cholesterol and the saturated fat from beef. So now I'm going to do a couple of slices. Now you don't have to pre-slice. You could put the whole um, piece of meat into your marinade, but honestly it gets more flavor if you pre-slice it. Notice that I'm cutting it on an angle. And it also gives me a chance if I want to, I can pull out that tendon. So I'm leaving them a little fat so that when I do the grilling, it's still going to allow me to have those really pretty grill marks. But because I'm cutting it in smaller pieces, the marinade is going to really soak in and make every bite juicy and delicious. So cut it on the angle, makes it pretty. And of course, you could just cut it maybe in two big pieces or three, but I've just done quite a few here. So again, it's uh, either a London broil. Um, there's lots of different cuts, but I want you to visually check it out and make sure it's one that does not have a lot of fat. And our marinade is going to help to tenderize it. I just wanted to double check that I could tell you the, the cut of this meat. It's a top round. So again, super lean. It's really a nice one. So how did I marinate it? I'm going to show you how I build this. First, I'm going to put the meat into a bag. This is going to be the perfect way to do the marinating. I'm just going to drop it in. I'm going to mix my sauce and then everything will be nestled in close together so that all those good flavors will be ready to infuse my meat. Okay, so it's ready to go and I'm going to ziplock it once I get all those wonderful flavors in there. So let's make my marinade. So the ingredients are going to be some red chili peppers, some garlic paste, Coco aminos, and this is so good. This is ginger paste, and of course some sesame oil. So I, I, I can give you a recipe, but I want you to just kind of look how the ratios go. Um, so I know that I've got about this much meat that I want to marinate, and I want to have plenty so it really fills up the bag and I get enough all around the flavor, all, all around the cuts of, cuts of meat so I can get plenty of flavor. So I'm going to go a little bit and I'm going to drop it in and then if I need to add more I can. So that's about a third of a cup and a tablespoon of my beautiful ginger. And I'm going to just cut these peppers open so that all those wonderful seeds can help to add flavor and pizzazz to my meats. Just drop them in. And again, these are going to add some heat. So if you know you don't want heat in your mix, that's easy. You can just leave that one out. You could substitute it um, with a softer pepper. You could do ancho chili peppers. They're softer. Um, but chipotle and the, and the Chinese uh, red peppers are pretty hot. Okay, and I'm going to add some garlic. So a tablespoon and a half. And then my coco aminos. So you could use teriyaki or you could use soy sauce. I really like um, coco aminos because it's it's super healthy. It's got no soy, of course, for those that need to avoid soy. And it's got just a great flavor, very versatile. So there's my liquid. I've got about a cup and a half total of liquid. So that's going to be just about right for my meat. And now I'm going to add in some of my adobo. So this is a Powerhouse Bakery special, and I love it because it's such a nice blend. I have oregano, thyme, smoked paprika, um, a little bit of a boat adobo. It goes a long way. So there we go. About a teaspoon and a half. You could also add some Himalayan salt. You know, my, my spices don't have any salt, so you might want to add it in. But 
the coco minos has some some good saltiness so you know you can decide how much you want to add but in general i i err on the light side and leave the salts to the end uh, it also works out really well to do some fresh ground salt right when you take it off the grill so that looks absolutely gorgeous do a little sample perfect okay let's pour it in so again this is sesame oil cocoa aminos some ginger paste and some garlic and now i'm going to pour it into my bag and zip lock it up so see that looks really good there's enough just to really make sure that all those pieces of meat are well nestled into those wonderful juices take all the air out zip it up put it in your fridge and it can last easily in your fridge for two days the more it marinates the better red meat's really easy because it does um it, it holds up really well if you did chicken and left it in the marinade for more than a couple days it would start to get uh, kind of rubbery so um, if you're gonna do chicken 24 hours is plenty especially if you're gonna pre-cut it like I did but beef is pretty easy going so if you marinated it on a Tuesday and you want to have the special salad ready to to present to your family on a Friday it would work out just fine okay so there we go so let me show you what the finished product looks like so what I did here was I pre-cut these slices so I could make the salads but I want you to see how beautiful it comes out so in this case I did not pre-cut the, um, the cut of meat and um, a London broil is another really good cut of meat and, and I think that's what this one is so again I just did quick grill marks and then I finish it off in the oven or you can just cover it in some foil after you grill it and chances are it'll be fully cooked so watch this I'm going to cut it on an angle and look how beautiful it is so I had a really hot uh, cast iron skillet and basically I, I seared it and then um, it was probably about four and a half minutes searing took it off the heat because notice on the other side it's not pretty at all but who's going to see that side so um, it's got one really good side and that way we don't have um, too much of that browning reaction and then I'm just going to do very thin cuts on an angle and I've got a nice medium rare look and so even if the cut of meat is not super tender um, it still comes out so pretty so isn't that just a lovely way to see that nice filet and you again could do it with salmon the same recipe is just fine um, using the coco minos and the ginger and the soy if you wanted you could even add a little bit of honey gives it a great way to nice nicely brown the the meat or the salmon so there you are absolutely gorgeous and I'm putting this all right on my platter here with my beautiful sauces and spices because this is the combination I'm going to show you now how to make the sauce that goes on top of the salad and it's a blend of some of my favorites so this is the sauced and spicy dipping and this is the Suzette and of course I'm using the adobo in the marinade so let's show you that next phase so those pieces of meat are absolutely gorgeous and now I want to show you how to make the sauce so this is the one that I, I poured over our salad and I just put it in a pretty little um, container because everybody wants a little extra sauce um, I usually sell little side containers of this when I have the salmon or the London broil and people always want to know where where's more of that sauce so it's good to keep it handy especially if if you're making this for your family just keep some in the fridge all right so let me show you so when I'm using my sauces from the fridge and this is something I want you to kind of think about when you're at home when you want to mix and match flavors you want to think of um, something that's kind of sweet something that's kind of uh, savory maybe even some citrus and then of course some uh, layer of flavor with a spice profile and with this marinade of course I used ginger I used garlic um, and you're gonna see those flavors come back in the sauce that goes on top of the meat so I am using the Suzette which is a blend of Dijon mustard uh, sesame oil 
and it's then it's got a little bit of ginger and garlic um, it's got a little olive oil but it's a great sauce and it's one that I sell here but I really encourage folks to um, learn to make sauces that are like this where it's got interesting flavors you start with an olive oil you start with Dijon so it's like a traditional French vinaigrette but then you start adding other flavors to kind of boost it and give it a different personality and that's kind of what we're gonna do with this sauce the sauce and spicy dipping is also similar to that and really when I created this um, I had a, a barbecue sauce and some organic ketchup and I wanted to just dress it up so I just started adding some of the flavors that I really liked in my traditional cooking and lo and behold I came up with a sauce and spicy dipping and people do love it it's wonderful so what I did was add some organic maple syrup I added some ginger and garlic um, and you know it's one of those things where it's got a little bit of heat and a little bit of sweet and that's what we're gonna do with this marinade so I'm gonna start with the sauce and spicy dipping and again it's gonna be about a one-to-one -one ratio sauce and spicy and here is my Suzette and if you don't already use squeeze bottles at home I really encourage it you can buy them at HEB or Walmart and it's so handy to be able to cook that way and I do love these little bottles but I actually put these on the table when I have guests over so they can add but it, when I'm producing in the kitchen and creating I just love the squeeze bottle and here's another little trick I'm adding some extra heat to my salad dressing you know when we're dressing kale we want to have a little extra kick kale is again one of those veggies that needs a little boost as far as flavor and, and texture breakdown so this beautiful hot chili sauce I'm just gonna put a little bit in it makes a wonderful kick to my base sauce so I can always taste this see what it needs and honestly I always add in a little bit of ginger people have um, often commented when I have them over for dinner and wanting to know what is that extra flavor because people don't use ginger very often so my secrets out now you're gonna know how to dress things up and make them really fancy you can even add a touch more of honey or agave so again you're starting with base flavors that you have in your refrigerator and you're dressing them up a little and if you've ever been to one of my cooking classes you know that my favorite thing to do is to sample as you go kind of think about what what family of flavors do you want to live in and then make those work with the whole meal so the marinade has the similar flavors and now the sauce has similar flavors so that is really nice mm, perfect so I'm gonna have it in my little um, serving dish so that not only can I have some at the table but I can also pre dress or even pre marinade with the same sauce so there it is so little sauce on the side mixed with um, the traditional flavors and then I added a few more items to give it a little more pizzazz let me show you one more thing before we have to close because I think what else is really valuable is how do we mix those greens and get lots of interest and intrigue so what I have here is basically the greens that I started with I have some kale, I have some romaine, I have the beautiful peppers, and these wonderful little cucumbers. So these are soft, I mean not soft, they're so small that the seeds are soft, and it makes it really nice in a salad. So if you don't already have some of these prepped in your fridge, it's worth doing. It's really nice to cut them on an angle. Gone are the days that we have all the little carrot rounds and cucumber rounds. Make them pretty and interesting by cutting them on the, um, on the edge. So I'm just doing a diagonal that gives it a really interesting edge same thing with my peppers I can take out the seeds or I can leave them in and again these can be pre-grilled too when you cook your meat absolutely you could cook the peppers and give them an extra little pizzazz um, on this one I'm going to take all the seeds out and I'm going to slice it on the edge these can be nice and thin so again you have lots of variety you could even marinate these in that Suzette dressing. They go great that way. So you've got your peppers, you've got your cucumber, and don't forget when you're doing kale, it's really important to get out these extra pieces of the rib. 
uh, even when you buy the organic kale, they're always going to have extra pieces in there. So my staff kind of rolls their eyes when I say, okay, you got to make sure you get all of these little pieces out, but it makes a difference, especially for somebody that's new to eating kale and they're kind of freaked out because they think it's going to be too chewy or hard. Make sure you take out all those pieces and it'll be a wonderful green. So we've got our kale and we've got the peppers and the cucumbers that we can either mix into our greens or we can have them on the side like I showed you. And then we also want to make sure we have a familiar green. And so the romaine is really nice that way because everybody knows romaine lettuce. And it's kind of like, okay, yeah, I get that one. And it's crunchy and it's really easy to enjoy. And so when you're doing romaine, make sure you get a blend of the darker green at the end as well as the lighter, extra crunchy on the other side. So notice this is really lighter in green and it adds so much pretty color and variety to my greens. Again, one of my favorites is arugula. We could add that in here. We could even add fresh basil. Uh, on this particular one, I've, I've been adding cilantro, but um, if you know you have a family member that's not a big fan of cilantro, um, basil is fantastic. Don't cut the pieces, just pull the leaves off. Um, and even some stem is okay, but I always try to get the majority of the leaves. Um, if you're gonna do a marinade, the stems work just fine. So there we go, we're pulling all the leaves off and there is a beautiful mix of herbs, familiar greens, and then that power packed kale, wonderful greens. And you can keep this in a Ziploc bag also so that it's in your fridge, ready to go, and gone are the days that you have to spend extra money on pre-mixed salad greens at HEB. Okay, so there you have it. We've got so many easy ways to layer a salad. Make sure you start with your wetter ingredients. So in this case, the beans, or you could use um, seasoned brown rice, or you could use quinoa, lots of options. And make sure when you put it down on the bottom, you've already seasoned that, um, that grain. So adding cilantro, uh, maybe even a little bit of adobo, and it makes it such a nice surprise to dig down in there and get some hearty complex carbohydrates. Second, make sure you have your beautiful greens. You could pre-dress the kale, but you could also just work it into those other more familiar greens and your family will love it. Lastly, make sure that you've got this beautiful steak or you could use chicken or salmon and using the beautiful um, cut on the angle gives it a really pretty look. Same thing with salmon. Um, gone are the days that we do that regular old straight cut. Make them extra pretty. And these beautiful grill marks really gives a nice pizzazz to your salad. So I hope this helps you and I hope to get to see you sometime at Powerhouse Bakery. So eat healthy and show the world that healthy really does taste amazing. We'll see you soon. Thank you.